in this table, we have a list of physical properties that lets us compare and contrast the Moon and Mercury with one another and also with the Earth itself. Now, first we can look at the radius, uh, and we can note that the Moon's radius is about 1740 kilometers, uh, and Mercury's radius is about 2440 kilometers, so they're comparable in their size. They're about the same size, although Mercury is uh, a bit bigger than the Moon. And we can also look at the Earth's radius, which is about 6,400 kilometers. So that is significantly larger than either Mercury or the Moon. Now, in addition to looking at their size through the radius, we can also compare their masses. And there's a bit of a typo here. It says 10,022 here. That should actually be 10 to the 22 power. And uh, this one should be 10 to the 23 power. And this one should be 10 to the 24 power. I apologize for that. But the masses that we can see here, 7.3 times 10 to the 22 for the moon, 3.3 times 10 to the 23 for uh, Mercury, and then 6 times 10 to the 24 uh, for the Earth. So if we look at the moon and the Earth in particular, the number out front, 7.3 and 6.0, they're pretty close to each other, but the exponents, 22 and 24, are pretty far apart. So basically that tells us that the Earth is about a hundred times as massive as the Moon. Now when we look at the density, 3300 kilograms per meter cubed for the Moon, 5400 kilograms per meter cubed for Mercury, and 5,500 kilograms per meter cubed for the Earth, we note that Mercury and the Earth have about the same density, really close. But the density of the Moon is way lower. That's going to be really important later on. So keep that in mind that the Moon has a much lower density than Mercury or the Earth. Now the last thing summarized in this table is the escape speed. And so that's related to whether or not these bodies will be able to hold on to their atmosphere. Remember, the molecules of air move at different speeds, and um, if you want to be able to retain an atmosphere, the planet has to have enough gravity to prevent the air from escaping. And the escape speed for the moon is 2.4 kilometers per second, for Mercury, it's 4.2 kilometers per second, and both of those are relatively low. That's because these are smaller objects, and they are uh, less massive objects, and so they don't have as strong a gravitational pull to hold things down. The Earth's escape speed is 11.2 kilometers per second, um, which is more than double that of Mercury, and a, not quite five times as much as that of the Moon. Now we saw both the Moon and Mercury have a lot of impact crater features. And basically these occur when meteoroids strike them. Uh, they cause basically a large hole, a crater, and they eject material which then surrounds that crater. And uh, that is uh, characteristic of these kinds of impacts. Now here we have a summary of some of the uh, principal features that occur when you have cratering. Um, craters typically are about 10 times as wide as the meteoroid that caused the impact, and they end up being about twice as deep. Although you find the rock is pulverized, basically turned into dust, at a much greater depth even than that. And uh, the interesting thing is that most of the craters that we see on the lunar surface date to about 3.9 billion years ago. Uh, there has been much less bombardment since then. And just to show you that craters uh, come in all kinds of sizes. Some of them are very large. We can see this crater here. There's a little scale here. From there to there represents 500 kilometers. Um, this crater here, you can see the scale is about 30 kilometers. So some of these craters are quite large in size. 
whereas other craters are very, very tiny, I mean, on the size of millimeters. So uh, there's a wide range of craters uh, all over the surface of the Moon, and, of course, of Mercury as well. Now, on the surface of the Moon, there's basically this layer of dust. It's, it's not quite dust, and it's not quite sand. It's kind of in between, and it's called regolith. And it's the dust that's left by these meteor impacts, these meteorite impacts. And uh, the surface of the moon is covered with this, this fine dust. But unlike dirt and dust on the Earth, uh, the moon doesn't have weather forces causing erosion to smooth them out. So these things can be very, very sharp, and uh, it was actually something that the astronauts had to contend with when they were on the moon, because uh, this dust would get on their suits, and they would carry it into their spacecraft, and it would be dangerous for them to breathe it in, etc. So uh, it was an issue that they had to think about. Now, even today, uh, very, very small micrometeoroids still are bombarding the surface of the moon, and that contributes to this regolith material. Now, billions of years ago, the moon was geologically active. It had volcanoes, uh, it had the creation of mountain ranges and uh, other surface features, but over time, the moon cooled off, and uh, essentially, it's no longer geologically active. So there are no more volcanoes, there are aren't really things like moonquakes and the like. It's just basically a rock in space. Now, while Mercury has a lot of similar features, there are some differences between the surface of Mercury and that of the Moon. Mercury has fewer craters than the Moon, uh, and it has these uh, long cliff-like structures that are several hundred kilometers long and up to 300 kilometers high. These cliffs are called scarp, and uh, they are prominently featured on the surface of Mercury. But probably the most startling surface feature on the surface of Mercury is the so-called Caloris Basin, which you can see here. And this is a massive impact crater. It's a huge impact crater, and it's actually on the opposite side of the planet from a region known as the Weird Terrain. It is believed that both the Caloris Basin and the Weird Terrain were formed by the same event, namely a very large impact on the surface of Mercury. And so what happened was there was an impact here which created the crater of the Caloris Basin, and it sent shock waves, shock waves that went literally through the planet, that went along the surface of the planet, and all converged on the opposite side, creating massive uplift. So the weird terrain is basically like a mountain range of a sort, where this uplift happened incredibly fast. You know, on Earth, mountain ranges happen over thousands of years, but this all happened in an instant. And so the geographical features, the geological features of this region, the so-called weird terrain, uh, it's called weird terrain for a reason. Uh, it's not like a normal mountain range. Things are at weird angles, and it looks very, very chaotic. And that's because it was created so quickly and by such an incredibly violent impact. Now, earlier I mentioned that the moon's density is really, really low. What that tells us is that the moon probably does not have very much iron or nickel in its core. Uh, remember, the Earth's core was predominantly composed of iron and nickel, uh, but the moon doesn't have that much. And uh, because of that, it also does not have a magnetic field the way that the Earth does. Uh, the crust of the moon is much thicker than that of the Earth, but its interior is quite different. All this is important because it will help us understand the theory of how the Earth's moon actually formed. And so we'll talk about that shortly. But before we do that, we can also just quickly look at the structure of Mercury. Mercury is quite a bit denser than the moon, just like the Earth is. 
and it does actually have a weak magnetic field. The field is due to a molten core, similar to the Earth's, but uh, Mercury rotates on its axis very, very slowly, and so the details of how its magnetic field are generated are not fully understood. One question that puzzled astronomers for a very long time was the basic idea, how did the moon get there? How did the moon get up there? And there were lots of different theories that were tried and found not to work. Uh, one idea was that the moon was just basically another planet that wandered too close to the Earth's gravitational field and got trapped. Uh, but it turns out that that wouldn't be possible to happen. Um, another idea was that when the Earth formed, part of the Earth spun off and formed into the moon. But it turns out that doesn't work either. Um, eventually, uh, it was discovered in the 1980s that the moon was formed when a Mars-sized planet crashed into the Earth billions of years ago. And uh, what you can see in the picture here is a computer simulation showing that impact. And so it's a kind of a glancing blow. You can see right here, there's sort of a sideways glancing blow here. And the Mars-sized planet basically gets shredded up. And then uh, it gets kind of spun off. A lot of that material uh, combined with the Earth in that impact, but uh, some of it kind of spewed off into space. And that part that spewed off into space, the gravity of it would eventually cause it to coalesce and form into a moon. And uh, that is the current understanding of how the Earth's moon formed, and it's called the giant impact theory. Now, Mercury is less well understood. It formed alongside the other major planets in the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. Um, there was that early bombardment period that we talked about previously where comets and asteroids and meteorites were constantly pummeling the planets and the energy released in these collisions melted Mercury uh, but over a long period of time, it slowly cooled down and solidified. And as it did, it kind of shrank, and it caused the crust to sort of crumple up. But anyway, that is uh, sort of our understanding of the Moon and Mercury, and how they're similar, and how they're different.